Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. In this video, I wanted to look at a new home office policy. I've shared my screen and we'll go through the policy in a moment. The policy is called Unable to Travel to a Visa Application Center to Enroll Biometrics. And this concerns overseas applications. I'm looking at the accessible version of the policy. The policy also is there's a PDF uh, version online. It's version one of the policy, and it was updated on the 5th of May, 2023. As in all of my videos, do check that there's not been a new update uh, since I've recorded this video. I'm recording this video on the 8th of May, 2023. So this is the latest version of the policy. I think this policy probably came about due to a number of cases. Uh, I just referred to the case of MRS, an entry clearance officer, uh, that's a reported decision from Upper Tribunal Judge Lindsay, 220, uh, sorry, 2023 UK UT 85. The head note of that policy says, and have a look at your screen, it is open to the respondent in line with Article 8 to have a biometric discretion policy that gives significant weight to the public interest and proper legitimate aims which justify uh, biometrics and that only exceptional in the sense of very compelling ca cases can outweigh that interest. But it is incompatible with Article 8 for the respondent's policy and the policy in force at that time was the family reunion policy uh, to direct decision makers that only uh, applicants with extraordinary and therefore rare, unique and unusual circumstances can succeed. So that thought policy was found to be unlawful, although it, it can be justified to have a policy that only in exceptional in the sense of very compelling circumstances uh, can the requirement for biometrics before entry be dispensed with. So I think that's probably the genesis of this new policy. Let's turn to this uh, policy. So this is guidance setting out the policy dealing with individuals who are applying to come to the UK and who claim they're unable to travel to a visa application centre safely. And there, it seems to be that the policy has two options. What you can apply for is a predetermination that's when they consider your application before you travel to a visa application center, but you still have to travel to a visa application center or to be excused altogether uh, from uh, attending a visa application center before traveling to the United Kingdom. And this is primarily, as you'll see from section one, aimed at those applying to join sponsoring family members in the United Kingdom, and it gives examples such as family reunion with those with protection status, but it's not limited to that. So there's just, as I said, there's, there's two options and there's some uh, definitions and let's give you the definition. So biometric excuse means the individual is excused from attending a visa application center to enroll their biometric information and the requirement to provide biometrics will normally be deferred. So you still need to do it, but until after you've been granted entry clearance and arrived in the United Kingdom. Or there's that second option of predetermination, means we assess the individual's entry clearance application before they give their biometrics. And if they meet the requirements of the relevant immigration rules, a provisional decision is made subject then to attending a VAC and enrolling biometrics, after which then you'll be granted entry clearance. So there's an introduction check section to the policy. It sets out the importance of biometric information in terms of fingerprints and facial images, uh, which allow for identity assurance and su suitability checks uh, uh, to be made. Then it sets out now about the section three, unable to travel to a visa application center and what they suggest is that before making a request under this policy you need to consider trying to resolve any difficulties you have so when you are making an application under this policy i think you you need to set out the attempts you have made uh, so can you you delay your journey until it's safe to travel 
Can you look to use an alternative VAC? Could you pay for priority visa or super priority visa? Could you use the keep my passport while applying service if you need to travel back to your home country pending a decision on the application? And where these options are available, uh, you need to show that you've tried and failed in respect to that or they're going to re reject your request under uh, uh, this policy. Just having to travel to a third country, including the expense that that requires, is not enough to apply for predetermination or to be excused under uh, this policy. In order to use this policy, you've still got to follow the online application process and make an online application. Then you're asked to select a VAC from a country where you'd normally be expect to commence your journey or a location you can attend before traveling on to the UK or the closest uh, to your current location. Then, after you've completed the online application process, you'll be taken to a commercial partner's website. Now, it's this website that has uh, the information where you can contact a UKVI contact centre if you believe you're unable to attend a VAC within 240 days from submitting the application online. And when you contact the call centre, you must provide in your application proper evidence in relation to a request for pre-determination or from excuse from, from providing the biometric. So with your application, you need not only to provide the evidence in relation to the application itself, if you're going to rely on this policy, you need also to provide information in relation to that. It's then escalated from a UKVI contact centre to a decision-making centre. The casework process is set out at section four of the policy. First thing they're going to look at is, have you made the correct application? Then 4.2 uh, looks at considering a request. It is the responsibility of the individual to set out whether they want decision makers to predetermine or to excuse them from the requirement to attend a VAC. Individuals must provide evidence in support of their specific request and explain why alternatives are not viable. So those alternative steps we looked at earlier show that they're not viable and provide evidence to support uh, your request. Decision makers must not agree to predetermine an application or excuse the individual from the requirements to attend a VAC to give their biometrics solely on the basis that they need an urgent decision on whether they can come to the UK it is, or if it's too difficult or, or expensive for them to travel to a VAC or that it's inconvenient. So mere expense, difficulty or inconvenience is not going to be enough under this policy and the expectation, you'll see the final sentence there in 4.2, is that individuals should try and resolve these challenges or delay their application. 4.3 sets out uh, the important pr uh, principles that they will apply in considering the applications. And, and this is this reference such as it was referred to in the case or MRS we looked at, that they're so compelling to be exceptional and there are no alternative options. So it's a high bar in relation to this policy. Notice also that if you've got no real prospect of being able to travel to the UK, they shouldn't offer a predetermination or excuse from providing biometrics. So even though you've, you can't travel to the visa application center in order to enroll your biometrics. You still need to be able to show you can travel to the United Kingdom or it's going to be refused. So when considering requests, there are four criteria and these all four criteria need to be satisfied. So 5.1. So this is really important. And if you're a representative 
making representations in support of a request with the application address these four criteria. So individuals must be able to satisfy a decision maker about their identity to a reasonable degree of certainty. So I don't want to, I can't provide biometrics, but I can still satisfy you as to my identity. They must provide evidence. They need to make an urgent journey to a VAC that would be particularly unsafe for them based on the current situation within the area they're located and along the route where they would need to travel to reach a VAC to enroll their biometrics, and they cannot delay their journey until later or use alternative routes. They must demonstrate their circumstances are so compelling as to make them exceptional, which go on, go beyond simply joining relatives who are living in the UK. They must confirm they're able uh, that they, they are able to travel to any VAC if they want their application to be predetermined or where they're requesting decision makers to excuse them from the requirement to attend a VAC to enroll their biometrics. They need to explain why they cannot attend any VAC, but are able to travel to the UK, just stressing that point again. There is guidance then on each of those four criteria. So section six deals with establishing identity and what you need to do when you're applying for 6.1 predetermination or 6.2, an excuse to attend a VAC. Then section seven, important here about the guidance on what is an unsafe journey. And again, these bullet points are worth addressing. Do you face be dangers beyond the current situation that exist in an area where they're located and along the route which they would need to travel? Do you personally face an immediate and real risk of significant injury of harm because of your personal circumstances? have an overriding need to travel urgently and cannot delay their journey, or in an area of ongoing conflict or the areas become unsafe following a catastrophic natural disaster. Interesting, we think of recent floods, say, in Pakistan, so natural disasters can apply under this policy as well. Or where if you've got to travel to the VAC, it's through a conflict area needed to travel to an unsafe location when they could have safely traveled to another place to provide their biometric information. Then there are other factors that are considered. So vulnerabilities, uh, lone female, frail or young with a child. Actually, look at that MRS case, because even though the policy was de declared unlawful in that case, Judge Lindsay still found that she would have met the policy and specifically referred to the individual's vulnerabilities in that case. So you may be able to cross refer to that mental or physical health issues with de demonstrable evidence that this prevents them from traveling to any VAC, but not traveling to the UK. So they can travel to the UK. Eight is looking at compelling circumstances. And the assessment of compelling circumstances, 8.1, includes a consideration of Article 8. So Article 8 is specifically referred to you can address the sponsor situation if there are particular issues with the sponsor that, that add to this. Uh, look at the sponsor situation or particular uh, situations in relation to the individual applicant. So, yeah, look at those examples, see if there are things in relation to the sponsor and the applicant that go towards the compelling circumstances. Then they give examples of what they say are non-compelling circumstances. So show yours are <laughs> compelling compared to those examples. Then there is specific guidance then on if you meet the four criteria and you want your application predetermined, what should be considered when an application is considered for predetermination. And it seems that predetermination may be considered before excusing from uh, traveling to VAC and excusing is more a last resort. Because then we have the guidance at 10 on excusing attendance at the uh, visa application center. And it says this, in most circumstances, decision makers must only agree to excuse the requirement for individuals to attend a VAC to enroll their biometric information as a last resort. 
individuals must be able to demonstrate they face insurmountable barriers to attending any VAC and have exhausted all other options uh, available to them alongside evidence they meet the four criteria. In most circumstances, decision makers must not agree to excuse them from the requirement to attend a VAC to enroll biometric information where they consider the individuals could travel to an alternative VAC in relative safety, even if it would be more, more inconvenient or costly for them. And again, the criteria in relation for excusing is dealt with. So address those in any representations that you're submitting with the application and make sure your evidence points towards this if you want to make a successful application for it to be excused from providing biometrics. There is then further guidance on fees and at 12, what should be set out in refusal and rejection uh, decisions. I just want to go back to the four criteria. It says in relation in 5.1 in the four criteria, decision makers must consider uh, whether the individual meets each of the four criteria and must provide written reasons for each criteria. The individual has not provided sufficient evidence to demonstrate they meet the requirements of so if it's refused and you want to challenge that refusal it's going to be by way of judicial review do look at whether the decision maker has properly addressed the criteria and provided proper reasons and considered the evidence you provided in support of that application so i hope that's helpful to you uh, have a look at this policy uh, this policy is a high bar in terms of getting excused, but it does provide a way forward, particularly in certain countries at the moment where there are ongoing conflict, where people will need to make applications uh, and make an application to be excused from providing uh, biometrics. I hope that's been helpful to you. I'll put all the links below the recording. Thanks a lot.